What is happening, y'all? Welcome to day one of Capcom Highlights 2024. I'm your co-host, Fighting Cowboy. I'm a content creator and variety streamer, and I've been playing Capcom games as long as I've been able to hold a controller. What's up, everybody? My name is Joe. I'm one of the Capcom USA community managers. Super excited for today's Capcom Highlights. We've got two days of exclusive looks uh, at some of our upcoming games, and we really can't wait to get into it. Cowboy, I think there's going to be some games in here that you'll be pretty excited about. I'm, I'm ready to see them. All right, well, Without further ado, let's get into today's first game. Kunitsugami, Path of the Goddess. Kunitsugami, Path of the Goddess, is a single-player action game that will test your strategy skills in a Japanese-inspired setting. The game is set on a mountain covered by defilement. During the day, rescue villagers to work with you. At night, the gates to another world open, and you'll fight to protect the maiden. Repeat this day-night cycle to bring peace to the villages and purify them. Mount Kafuku, a land blessed by nature and the goddess who inhabits it, is suddenly engulfed in a black substance. This defilement transforms the mountain. It steals masks that contain the goddess's powers, making them its own, and threatens the villagers. So is the protagonist of the game. So guides the maiden, Yoshiro as they use the masks and work with the villagers to purify each village and return the mountain to peace. Now, let's take a look at some in-game footage as we go over elements of the gameplay. Torii gates cover the mountain. At night, these gates connect to another world, and the seethe emerge to steal Yoshiro's power. During the day, you must purify the defilement and guide Yoshiro to the gates so she can sever the connection to the other world. Villagers who have been purified are given powers through masks and are able to take on a variety of roles as they work with So to fight off the seethe. Woodcutters excel at close quarters combat. Archers fight from a distance. Ascetics use spells to restrain the seethe. There are many other roles. You can freely place villagers who have been assigned roles. The carpenter accompanying So can repair contraptions in villages to help fight off the seethe more effectively. During the day, rescue villagers make repairs, and strategically place villagers to fight off attacks. The game progresses in real time, 
and night arrives before you know it. The seeds that emerge from the gates at night attack Yoshiro in many different forms. So gracefully fights them off with dance-like sword techniques. Join the villagers who have been assigned roles and fight off the seeds until the sun rises. Tsuba guards contain the goddess's power and give So the ability to launch powerful attacks. Change villager placement and roles in real time, even at night. What placements and roles will be most effective? Where will the villagers fight? And which enemies will Seoul focus on? Constant changes will test your strategy and tactics. Guide Yoshiro to the Torii Gates as the days and nights cycle to purify the gates and villages of defilement. <laughs> Amongst the seeth are the especially fearsome Festering Seath. They pursue So and Yoshiro with powerful attacks. Working together with the villagers is the key to defeating the Festering Seath. Purify the defilement covering the mountain. What is it that awaits Yoshiro where you guide her? This title will be available in Japanese as well as English, Chinese, French, and other languages. We're excited to share this Japanese-inspired setting and dynamic gameplay with players around the world. Kunitsugami, Path of the Goddess, launches on Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Series X, S, Windows, PlayStation 5, and Steam, available in 2024. All right, there you go. There's a first deep dive into Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess. It's coming later this year, and it looks really awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited that we finally got to see gameplay. Uh, this is something I've had my eye on, and, and it's really interesting seeing kind of the fusion of both strategy and action, like you know, setting up your troops for the battle, but then also engaging in the battle and moving them as things progress. Definitely a very unique concept. And of course, we got that, that you know, very traditional Japanese aesthetic going on with the spirits and whatnot. So really looking forward to this one. Yeah, super unique, super creative game. With that said, let's get to our next title. Dragon's Dogma 2. Hello everyone, my name is Hideaki Itsuno, and I'm the director of Dragon's Dogma 2, and I'm producer Yoshiaki Hirabayashi. Dragon's Dogma 2 launches on March 22nd. Today, we'd like to introduce some of the game's features. Dragon's Dogma 2 is a narrative-driven, open-world, action RPG set in an immersive fantasy world. We hope players feel like they've been reborn in this vibrant new world. Join forces with pawns skilled with various weapons to form a party of up to four. While this is a single player game, forming parties will recreate the feel of being on an adventure with friends. Players will encounter legendary monsters as they venture through the distinct areas of the game. Some monsters fly through the air with dynamic attacks while others are more cunning and mysterious. Some appear at night, and others are colossal in nature, 
they will create a variety of challenges for the player. Test your decision-making ability and creativity using your vocation and the surrounding environment. Of course, you can always choose to run away. If you run somewhere occupied by other characters, you may end up naturally joining forces. But reactions will vary character to character. Some will be frightened, while others will show courage. Their relationship with you, the Arisen, will vary based on the actions you take. That, in turn, will change their relationships with each other. A variety of characters await you on your journey through Dragon's Dogma 2. Over 1,000 characters inhabit the world, each with their own unique stories and motivations. They will sometimes ask for your help, marking the beginning of a new quest. Quests have an array of different objectives, from saving people being attacked by monsters and avoiding detection as you sneak into a location, to locating and delivering valuable items. Ah, I see you desire one of my masterpieces. Very well. In some situations, combat isn't your only option. One alternative might be to make a counterfeit item and see if you can pass it off as the real thing. The world is a complex web of human relationships and the player's choices have consequences. We've expanded the world of the original game to make it a denser, more elaborate experience, enabling players to fully inhabit the role of the Arisen. We have several announcements ahead of the release of the game. First, take a look at this video. Starting today, players can create and edit their Arisen protagonist and main pawn in the Dragon's Dogma 2 character creator and storage. Of course, you'll be able to transfer the character data to the full version of the game. Up to five Arisen and five pawns can be created. This is the perfect opportunity to prepare for the adventure before the release of the game. Furthermore, we are planning to have some of the pawns created by specific players as official pawns. Players will be able to hire up to two of these pawns to aid them on their journey. We will have more details about official pawns and who they will be in the near future. Please watch for updates. Dragon's Dogma 2 is now available for pre-order. The Standard Edition and the Deluxe Edition both include pre-order bonuses. We hope you consider pre-ordering. The March 22nd release date is right around the corner. We here on the Dragon's Dogma 2 team are thrilled for you to experience this game. Thanks for your patience. Wow, there's so much good stuff in there, lots to dissect. And it looks like people can go ahead and start creating their Arisen and their pawns with the character creator, right, Cowboy? Yeah, that's something I'm really looking forward to. I usually spend my first hour of gameplay just in character creation, so getting that done and ready to go is gonna be fantastic. And of course, I get to create my own official Cowboy pawn, so make sure to keep your eyes out, because it's gonna be the best tank in the game. Well, we could spend all day talking about the details, but we've actually got a special guest joining us. It's the director of the game, Itsuno-san. Hello, Itsuno-san, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, konnichiwa. Capcom no Itsuno Hideaki desu. Kyo wa yoroshiku onegaishimasu. So we're very excited to talk to you about Dragon's Dogma 2 today. We also had the announcement of the official pawns, which is something I'm very excited to be a part of. And pawns are something that are very unique to Dragon's Dogma. So talking about pawns in general, how have they evolved in Dragon's Dogma 2? What can you tell us about them? Well, to compare the pawns, it's very... 
というよりかはより個性的になっていますあのよりあのプレイヤーが育てたメインポーンの、ま、知識とか、えー、一緒にメインポーンと行動した内容とかが、えー、貸し出した先でもより忠実に、えー、その経験を、まあ、他のプレイヤーに伝えたりとかすることができるようになっていますあと今回あのスペシャリティっていう、まあ、ポーンそれぞれの特別な能力っていうのがあるんですけどもこれはポーン1人につき1個だけ習得することができるんですけどもこれがちょっと新しくて面白くて主にプレイヤーが「あの面倒くせえなあこれ誰かに代わりにやってくんねえかな」っていうことをポーンがやってくれるような特殊能力になってるのでこれをまあどの能力をポーンにつけるかもしくはどの能力をついてるポーンを借りるかっていうところもすごく、えー、今回面白いかなと思ってます。Definitely looking forward to that customization. So, you've shown off a lot of monsters so far, but thinking about everything you've been able to share, is there one that's really a standout that you can't wait to see players get the chance to go up against? Sphinx. Sphinx, this is. Well, first, I'm going to get a little bit of a problem. I'm going to get a little bit of a problem. I'm going to get a little bit of a problem. I'm going to get a little bit of a problem. I'm going to get a ぜひスイングスと戦ってもらいたいなとま,まず喋ってもらいたいなと思います。Sounds like we're gonna have to hunt down that Sphinx. So a little bit of a fun question before we move towards the end here. What would you say is your favorite vocation that you had chance to play so far? 最近やってるのはソーサラーなんですけども、えー、この前新しく紹介したジョブの、えー、まあアリズン。そのアリズンっていうジョブの中でソーサラーの武器を装備させて近接攻撃系のジョブとソーサラーを混ぜて戦うというのが最終的には楽しかったのでそれをおすすめしたいと思います。Well, I could honestly ask you questions all day about this game, but I know you're busy and I do want to respect your time. So thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Thank you so much, it's Suno-san, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye bye. Well, that about wraps it up for day one of Capcom Highlights 2024. Cowboy, what was your favorite part? I've been waiting 12 years for a Dragon's Dogma sequel, so as much information as I can get about that, the happier I am. And between the official pawns and the new locales we got a chance to see in the teaser, I'm pretty pumped. I will say, though, Kinitsugami definitely looks like a very unique combination of action and strategy, so I'm also looking forward to that. Yeah, before we wrap up, we do want to say thank you to Itsuno san for taking the time to speak with us today. We'll be back with day two of Capcom Highlights on March 11th, so we hope to see you there. Thanks so much, everybody.